Hey guys, today I wanted to talk to you about how do you know if what property you're buying is a good deal or not. Everybody talks about deals. You gotta find good deals. You'll make money when you buy, right? That's what everyone says when you buy real estate, especially all these rentals and stuff. But here's, here's the problem. Everybody talks about finding deals and it's like, what the heck does that mean? And how do you do it? And then they tell you, here's what you do. And then you're like, I don't want to do that. So let's look at basically what are some simple things to look at to know if it's a good rental buy or not. So I just want to look at two simple things, two simple things to evaluate quickly. Is this a good buy? Now, here are some of the pitfalls. Some of the pitfalls are falling in love with the place, getting emotional, really thinking you need something, trying to get in a bidding war. Okay. You want to avoid all that stuff. The other thing is believing that the only way to find deals is to buy something below market value. Okay, because if you are married to the idea that you can only buy a property that is substantially below market value, you have to basically do this full time. You may get lucky, something may happen, but for the most part, the, the, the two things people tell you to do, they tell you to market. What does that mean? They tell you to send out mailers, to cold call random people, to try to get people to sell you their house that weren't planning on selling you their house. That, my friends, is a full-time job if you're going to do it well. And it's just not something I want to do. Who wants to do that? I don't want to do that. Then the other thing is, hey, you have to have these great relationships with these realtors and you have to be a super duper investor or a real estate agent yourself. Well, what if you're just starting out? Okay. So these main ideas that you're supposed to be able to find deals and get market on off market deals. And that's the only way you can win. That's not true. And it's just not worth it, in my opinion. Maybe eventually, if you're doing this full time or if you reach financial independence, you can go ahead and devote more time to that. You can tinker around with it. But for the most part, psh, no thanks. The first property I ever bought was actually in Turkey. Okay. I was living in Turkey at the time and there was this triangle of neighborhoods that I knew I wanted to live in. I was renting in there and I knew I wanted to live. So I would search online every now and then this triangle of properties. And I was looking for, you know, a three bedroom, at least two bedroom, but one at three bedroom. Cause I've always thought you get a better deal, the more bedrooms in regards to renting out. So I knew I was going to live there, but the more bedrooms I have, the more roommates I can rent rooms to. And you just win the more rooms you have. I've just always known that. I knew that when I was renting apartments. Okay. The, the cost for a two bedroom apartment. If I have one guy to share a two bedroom apartment with, I'm going to pay more than if I have two guys to share a three bedroom apartment with, right? That's just common sense. And so when I'm at an apartment complex and the two bedroom is you know, 1500 and the three bedrooms, 1800, well, 1500 by, divided by two is 750 each. All right. 1800 divided by three is 600 each. I'm saving $150 by going in the three bedroom. And that's generally how the economics always work. And I've always worked. So that was already in my head. So I'm thinking three bedroom, but you know, I would take a two bedroom. I just didn't want a one bedroom. I wanted to be able to rent out a room at least. Okay. I was looking at this triangle on and off for over a year, probably two years at least. So I, by doing that, I learned the market. You don't need to spend that much time on it, but if you're regularly searching a specific market, you begin to see what the values are. You get to see what things are going for. And you inherently then all of a sudden understand when something's a good deal. Well, long story short, this, the extension to the Metro, the subway that they've been building forever finally opened up one day. And after work, I decided to take it. When I went home that day, I got online and I looked at that triangle again, because I thought, you know, Hey, this Metro opened. I'm just kind of curious now. And I hadn't looked in months and all of a sudden I saw a property that was cheaper than anything that I had sold. I reached out to the guy, went and saw it the next day and put money on it that day. So even though I had been looking for over a year, when I found someplace, I moved on it that day. I was trying to figure out what was wrong with this place because it was so much cheaper than all the other three bedrooms. And I'm looking and I'm looking and I'm looking and really it turns out I got lucky in my timing. This, this a particular apartment had been listed for much higher and I didn't see it because my search only showed properties under a certain price. And so I didn't even see it. It was priced out of my search. But the day that I searched was the same day they lowered the price. Why did they lower the price? It was a desperate sale. The guy actually I found out had a gambling problem and he was in serious debt. Well, Anyways, that's how I found that place. When I bought my first place in Los Angeles, I had been looking and looking and looking and I had a general idea of a budget. And once again, I was looking for hopefully a three bedroom and all these things. When I found the place that I put my offer on, I looked at it. I figured out the offer, which was just a good competitive price and why I felt safe buying it was there was already a tenant in there. The tenant was paying 1800 something. I forget at the time when I bought it, it was close to $1,900. After my down payment and everything, once I bought this place, my mortgage and my HOA and my insurance 
was going to be around $1,300, maybe $1,400 with insurance, at most $1,400. So right off the bat, I knew that no matter what happened, I could pay for this purchase. What I mean by that is if I lost all my job, I had no savings, and I had to go move in with my mother, and I had no money, I could rent out this place and cover all my costs and keep it. So to me, it was a safe buy. I also knew at the current rent, I was actually going to make a little bit of money each month. And so when I bought the place, I was in no hurry to move in. Well, long story short, I get a job, I move across the country, and to this day, that same tenant is in there. And to this day, the rent has continued. Every year, I increase the rent, increase the rent. Right now, it's 2310 and I find out soon if it's going to be 2430 I think is what I'm raising it to. Um, and my costs haven't increased. And so, as you can see, as rents go up and your fixed rate mortgage stays the same, it becomes a safer and safer and safer investment as time goes on. So, one way to really look at a property and to see, is this a good buy or not, is can you cover the cost through rent? So, you look at what are the rent going rental rates, okay? And a great place to look at that is Rentometer. Rentometer, rentometer.com. I'm not sure how you're supposed to say it, if it's a rentometer or, or rentometer, but, um, you know, rent, rentometer, rentometer.com. You can put in uh, your address, your bedrooms and everything, and it'll tell you if that's a high price or a low price. Uh, Zillow Rentals is a great app that I use on my phone where you can just look, you know, or you can just even look at any rental site and look at what are two bedrooms going for, what are three bedrooms going for in that area, okay? So what I would suggest is if you're looking at a house, a single family house or a condo or whatever, and you're trying to figure out what, what would this rent for? Look at all the two bedroom, one bath, single family houses that you got in a, in a multi-mile radius, right? One mile, two mile, doesn't really matter. You look at Zillow rentals, you look at any rental site, hot pads, and you see what is the range. So let's say the range is anywhere from 1800 to 2500. Okay, what's the difference? The difference is going to be the 2500 is maybe a new place. It's really nice. The 1800 is maybe a little beat up. Okay, you're going to have you're always going to have a range, and that range is always going to take into account how nice a place is. Maybe one block's a little better than another block. Maybe the square footage, right? Not all two bedroom one baths are the same size. This two bedroom one bath is really large. This two bedroom one bath has teeny rooms, and so there's all these different factors that go into the rent. But you can see the cheapest two bedroom one bath is 1800. Either take the cheapest price or knock it down 100 or 200 bucks. Let's just take 300 off the price and say 1500. Because can you rent it out for 1500? Yes. If you put that two bedroom, one bath house that you're buying in that neighborhood where the cheapest possible rent is 1800 up for 1500, you will get calls immediately. Now, why do I say 1500? Because if everything goes to crap and you need to rent this thing out yesterday, that's a price that you could rent out literally in a day if you need to. Not the best move, but I'm just saying emergency, right? Now, if you want to price that house, you look at how much that house is selling for, and you look at your down payment, and you every Redfin, Zillow, Trulia, uh, Realtor.com, all of them will show you your estimated price based on your tax. They do all the math for you. So they will say, all right, here's your 30-year mortgage based on um, current interest rates, based on the current tax rates, based on all these things, and they say your monthly payment would be $1,200, okay? If your monthly payment was $1,200, and that includes principal, interest, okay? So that includes basically the mortgage payment. That includes your, t your property taxes. That includes your insurance. Okay, maybe if there's any utility costs or HOA, usually that's also included in those calculators, okay? And boom, your monthly cost is $1,200, and you can rent it out for $1,500, you're clearing $300 a month. Right there, you know that this is a safe buy, okay? So, that is the, the most simple common sense way of figuring out, is this a safe buy, is, is, it, a, is, it, a, is it an okay place to buy. Can I buy this place as a rental? Will it work? That is one way to just ensure it will work. In fact, anytime I'm going to buy a place to move in, if you're going in to buy a place to move in, I also want it to be a safe buy. I want to be able to take the place I'm moving into and rent it out and cover my expenses in full so that if everything goes wrong, I'm covered.
Now, I live in Los Angeles. This is hard to find sometimes. Most neighborhoods right now with the prices, even if you put 20% down, your monthly cost is going to be more than how much you could rent it for. So LA is not a very safe market in my opinion. Now, you can find those places in LA, but you know, you're, you're, you're going to have to look a little bit. But you can find them on the normal websites. You can find them on the, what's called the MLS, okay? You can find them on Redfin. You can, you can do these searches. And you will be able to find it. It may not be the, the perfect place. It may not be the neighborhood you want. But you can find places that are safe buys. So, in California, in Los Angeles, for example, in expensive markets, you are just simply looking at this measurement. Because you may find a place that's a good price for the market, but it's still not a safe buy in regards to my measurement here. Still not a safe buy in regards to I can rent it out tomorrow and cover all my costs. Okay? Because if you could rent it out for market rate and you still owe $300, well, in my opinion, that's just not a safe buy. I don't want to buy that place. Even if it's my dream home, I don't want it because what if tomorrow I lose my job and everything goes and I have no money? And now all of a sudden I can rent it out and live with my mother for free, but then I still have to come up with $300 a month to live with my mother, to pay for them to live in my house? No, thank you. That to me is not a safe buy. It may be, good, it may be a good buy. It may be a value, but it's not safe. Okay. Now, some people would argue, well, Ken, it's still safe because if it was a good buy, you could sell it and get all your money back. That's true, but when you sell a place, you lose a lot of money. You lose commissions, you lose titles, all right? So if, if you bought a place for you know, $275,000 and then you turned around and sold it for $275,000, you would lose about $20,000, right? And so no, you, it's not safe. You would have to be so much under market value and then we just go back into that whole how do you find these things way under market value. Okay, now there are other markets like Cleveland where I also invest where this measurement is not the best measurement, okay? Because if I'm buying a duplex for $51,000, like my first duplex I bought, and I'm coming up with 25%, which is, you know, doable, and now all of a sudden my cost, my monthly mortgage and everything is $400, and the whole place is running for $1,100, well, okay, it's really easy in these neighborhoods to buy safe buys, but they may not be safe. Why? Because in Cleveland, things are really old, and when things are really cheap, oftentimes they're not taken care of. And so it gets a little trickier, but if you're just looking online, if you're just looking at websites and you wanna know, is this a good purchase? Once again, find the neighborhood. Find that neighborhood, see what things are going for. See what duplexes cost, see what triplexes cost, see what single families cost in that neighborhood. See the range. And when you're in a place like Cleveland, you're gonna see $20,000 and $80,000 in the same neighborhood. Well, that's when you gotta look at the pictures. That 20,000 is gonna be a gutted, crappy place that's gonna need a ton of work, and that 80,000 is gonna be move-in ready, right? So you're gonna have that range too, but you're gonna learn what are the differences, okay? What are the reasons this is this price and then this price, okay? So then, as you look at pictures, as you look at neighborhoods, you can see what are better deals and what are worse deals. A lot of people in real estate, the quick way to evaluate a property is what they call the 1% rule. The 1% rule basically says this. I'm buying a place for $200,000. 1% of $200,000 is $2,000. If the place rents for $2,000, I'm renting it for 1% of the purchase price, and that should cover all my costs. That should be a good, a good buy, okay? That's fine. That's an easy, good way to evaluate quickly on the numbers only. However, when I started buying in Cleveland, I wanted a 2%. If I was buying a place for $60,000, I wanted the total rents to be at least $1,200. And the reason is, is because I'm buying older houses in a worse neighborhood, out of state with greater costs, and I could find decent properties for 2% in Cleveland. I can't find any properties in Los Angeles for 2%. It's hard enough to find properties in California for 1%. But I can find them. 
I can possibly find places for 1% in Los Angeles. If Cleveland, all I can find are properties for 1%, I'm not buying in Cleveland, I'm buying in LA. Why? Because appreciation is better in LA. LA is close to me. I know LA, right? It just makes more sense. And actually property tax is cheaper in California than, than Ohio in comparable pricings, right? Um, and so those are the quick ways. As you look at your market and you begin to look at what are these things doing? Can I get 1% of the purchase price for rentals? Is this market more of a 2%? Is this neighborhood more of a 2% or a 1.5%? In which case you evaluate those numbers and that's how you do quick evaluations of is this a good buy? Is this a safe buy? If you find a place that you like, it's a good price, it's a safe buy like we talked about, which is what your monthly costs are will be covered in rent and then some or it's 1% or 2% depending on the market of the purchase price, go ahead and make an offer. Just make sure you always do an inspection and make sure you always do a title search because those are the main ways that you're gonna protect yourself from getting screwed. And I would hate for you to get screwed. Subscribe to this channel and find out how I got screwed and how I learned some of these lessons the hard way that I can save you money by not having to learn them the hard way. So please subscribe to the channel. I'm going to be going over each one of my purchases in real estate. I'm also going to be updating you on my dividend uh, payments in my stocks. And I'm going to be telling you about my FIRE journey, which is financial independence, retire early. If you find this video helpful, please like it. Please press that little thumbs up. And once again, subscribe. Have a great day. And thanks for watching.